save yourself. The game um, is uh, it's based on Journey to the West, which is uh, uh, you know I, I know from from my childhood as uh, Monkey the TV series, but. Uh, the original source material is a 400-year-old Chinese novel that's been adapted into lots of different mediums. And we wanted to, after Heavenly Sword, we wanted to do a new, new idea. And um, we really liked the idea of um, playing with another character that's, that's not you and, and feeling empathy for that character. And um, Monkey just is such an amazing story. Um, and it survived 400 years because of the, the principal characters, Monkey, Trippy Tucker. And so, we decided that um, we would do our own twist on it, set it in a, in a kind of a, a lush post-apocalyptic future and see how far we could push storytelling between these two characters and gameplay as well. Uh, in our story, Monkey is a loner. He's, um, he's a survivalist, kind of like Rambo. He lives out in the wilds on his own. He doesn't mix with people. He avoids conflict, but if he's pushed into a corner, he's brutal. And um, his counterpart um, is Trip who comes, who's like a 19-year-old girl. She comes from a community that her father set up and it's almost like an ideal hippie community. It's like green energy. They get old technology, reprogram it. They believe in uh, cooperation in, uh, in, in humanity and in civilization, or at least like the beginnings of a civilization. Um, and it couldn't be more different. When you combine those two together, you've got this great dynamic, different world views, different character journeys. I think um, in Monkey, um, the, the character journey is, is more important than the actual physical journey, and that's what we wanted to preserve. Well, combat's about 30% of the game, the rest being kind of traversal with trip and puzzle solving. So we wanted to make sure that the combat was accessible. Um, now, making something accessible doesn't mean making it easy. It means that um, You've got your core combat moves, your uh, standard attacks, heavy damage attacks, wide attacks to knock people away. You've also got a stun attack, which will temporarily stun an enemy while you can take care of others. Counters, evades, and all that. So all the core elements of a good combat system are there. And um, all of them are accessible with one or double button presses. And then um, on top of that, we've got the idea of takedown. So when Trip scans uh, an area where there are enemies, <clears throat> she can um, find flaws in their schematics. So for example, if there's a gun scout, one particular gun scout might have a detachable machine gun arm. So if you, get, if you can clamber around and get close to him, take him out quickly, you then have a chance to rip off his arm, use that as a machine gun and mow down the other guys. For Heavenly Sword, we wanted to, to create really realistic drama in the cutscenes. Um, so that's how we met Andy Serkis, basically. I saw Lord of the Rings and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be cool to get someone like him to, to you know, work with us on motion capture, we didn't know how to do it. And um, my brother happened to be his mortgage advisor, so that, that worked out all right. Um, and, he, and we gave him a full open book. He could come in and collaborate with us as little or as much as he wanted, and he got involved deep into it, and we learned so much from him. Alex Garland, we, uh, got, in we got in touch with through an agency looking for a writer, and I uh, met, met up with him. He asked a lot of questions. Turns out he's a massive gamer and he plays online all the time, on Xbox Live. He's got his own clan of friends who don't know who he is. And um, he's uh, really interested in um, gaming, he always has been. And he was looking for an opportunity to get stuck in. And we offered that, and we were totally open about it. Um, he was very respectful of the medium. And we all go into it terrified at the beginning, not knowing if anything's gonna work, but we all you know, work to, as equals to make it work, and that was really good. I think it's quite myopic to just look within the games world. I think all these people bring something new to the table, that's why they are successful, and they also um, teach you a hell of a lot about things that you wouldn't have thought about yourselves as game developers. So it's been totally, totally symbiotic and a lot of fun. My name's uh, Tamim Antonyadis, and I'm the Chief Creative Ninja at Ninja Theory and we're working on Inslave for the Xbox 360 and PS3 out this autumn.